Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my talk. My name is Maria Selkovic, and I work as a developer advocate at Create.io, a company that has been working on CreateDB database for approximately eight years. Today, I'm going to present you some interesting stuff about CreateDB. More specifically, I will show how we implemented distributed join algorithms in CreateDB, or how we made distributed joins 23,000 times faster. Before I go into more details, let me first introduce CreateDB to you. CreateDB is a distributed database built for data-intensive analytics solutions. It has been there since 2014, and it's open source under Apache License 2.0. One of the main features of CreateDB is its compatibility with Postgres interface. Also, its storage strategy is based on Apache Lucene project which offers scalable and high-performance indexing and very efficient search over documents. Now, let me motivate my talk. Why I decided to talk about this with the joins in the first place? Every day, CreateDB analyzes indexes data at scale. Usually, we talk about terabytes, sometimes even petabytes of data. The design of CreateDB allows for efficient query over large data sets. And as CreateDB is SQL compatible, one can expect that developers rely on join operators when querying multiple tables. However, CreateDB has distributed architecture, and this poses several challenges for implementing efficient join operators. The default algorithm we rely on for implementations of most join operators is nested loop join algorithm. Of course, we'd add some further optimizations for distributed query execution. The focus of this talk is going to be on EquiJoin. This is one of the most commonly used type of joins in CreateDB, and I will show you how we improved its performance quite significantly with the algorithm called distributed block hash join algorithm. In general, CreateDB supports all types of joins cross joins, inner joins, and outer joins. The focus of this talk, as I already mentioned, is on equi-join, defined as a type of inner join with a condition that has one or more multiple equality operators chained together with n. The first query on the right side of this slide shows the condition that belongs to equi-join. Here, two equality operators are chained with n operator. The second query shows the condition that does not belong to EquiJoin. Here we have two quality operators that are combined with OR operator. The initial implementation of EquiJoin, as already suggested, was an acid loop algorithm. This algorithm is simple and relatively easy to implement, but it comes with very high performance costs. The time complexity of an acid loop algorithm is quadratic with respect to the number of rows of the two tables involved in join. So if we talk about large data sets, as quite common in CreateDB, this can be a very expensive operation. And we choose to optimize every join performance with hash join algorithm, which is common method for implementing equi joins in relational databases. The idea behind the algorithm consists of two phases build phase and prop phase. During build phase, the algorithm scans the smaller table and stores hash values of join attributes in the hash table. Next, in the prop phase, the algorithm probes each row in another table against the hash table. If match is found, it emits a join row. This algorithm is significantly more efficient compared to nested loop. Its time complexity is linear with respect to the number of rows of two tables involved in join. Furthermore, this algorithm is a very good choice if the smaller table fits into memory. But as I will discuss a little bit later, this is also a significant limitation of the hash join, especially when we talk about CreateDB and its distributed execution. Now let's have a closer look how the hash join actually works in CreateDB. First, in the build phase, for each row in the left table, and we assume that left table is smaller table, the algorithm calculates the hash and inserts the row into the hash table. 
As multiple rows can produce the same hash, we use chain hash table to avoid collisions. So the value in the hash table is a list of rows that share the same hash. Next, the algorithm moves to the prop phase. During the prop phase, for each row in the right table, it calculates the hash and looks it up in the hash table. If entry is not found, the row is just skipped. But if entry is found, the algorithm goes through the list of rows and validates the drawing condition. At this point, we do condition validation because as all rows in the list have the same hash, we need to make sure which one actually satisfies the drawing condition. As a result, if the row satisfies the condition, the algorithm needs to combine the row to the client. At this point, we already had the initial implementation of the hash join algorithm, and we wanted to see its performance compared to the initial implementation with nested loop. We run our benchmarks on five node cluster, each node running with 32 gigabytes of RAM and on 12 cores. The benchmark we use is relatively simple. We make two join queries on two tables. The first query matches all rows from both tables, and the second query matches only one fifth of all rows. We start with a row count of 10,000 and go up to half million rows. Then we run each query multiple times and we pick the execution, average execution time to avoid noise. However, we notice that execution times were quite consistent across rounds. From the table on this slide, we can see that uh, there is significant performance improvement, which is consistent across all queries. For match all query with half million rows, the improvement is more than 11,000 X. For query that matches one fifth of rows, the nested loop algorithm doesn't even finish in a specified time frame. And here we talk about time frame of two hours. At this point, 11,000 X sounds quite a lot but it's still not as high as we advertised. So let's see how we further optimized hash join to get even better performance improvements. So as I already mentioned, the limitation of hash join algorithm is that it requires one of the tables to fit into memory. For CreateDB, this limitation is not acceptable, as there are often cases when this requirement can just, just can't be satisfied. And we address the problem with algorithm called block hash join algorithm. The main idea behind this algorithm is to divide a large data set into smaller chunks or blocks and to work on them in isolation. In particular, the algorithm starts the build phase, but it stops filling the hash table when it reaches the size of the block. Then it moves to the prob phase, but now it operates only on the current block of rows. After prop phase, if there are remaining rows, the build phase is repeated, and this is done until all rows from the left table are went through and checked for join condition. Important aspect of block hash join algorithm is actually finding a suitable block size. This is done before the start of every query iteration. And the first step in the process is to find out how much memory is available. To find out how much memory is available, we use the information from circuit breaker mechanism in CreateDB. I will not go uh, into details of how circuit breaker actually works, but in general, the idea is to use um, to have a mechanism that monitors the memory usage and to terminate the operation if it comes close to memory exhaustion. Memory limit in the circuit breaker can be set up manually or managed by CreateDB. And the link on this slide prov provides very good explanation on how circuit breaker actually works in CreateDB. Using this mechanism, we can find the memory limit and how much memory is used to calculate available memory. After finding available memory, the next step is to find out how many rows can fit into that memory. And this is done by dividing memory with the estimated row size. Row size is estimated based on the statistical information. And I will further explain um, this aspect in a minute. 
Finally, the block size is the minimum value of maximum number of rows that can fit into memory and the number of rows in the table. So the idea is not to create a block bigger than the table itself. Here is also worth mentioning that left table is always split into blocks and right table is read once for each block. That's why we decided to apply the additional optimization that checks the size of the left and right table and switches a smaller table to the right. Our practical experience shows that this optimization is very worthwhile. So, how do we find a row size? And now I want to illustrate this process by using a relatively simple example. Based on the query we can see on the slide, we can conclude that the resulting row is the composite of columns from tables T1, T2, and T3. How the resulting uh, row will look like can be seen from the logical plan that is available in CreateDB. Logical plan shows how to produce the composite result rows for a given query using a tree of nested operations. In this example, the plan shows that first rows from T1 and T2 will be collected, then hash join applied, then rows collected from T3, and then the final hash join will be applied that produces the composite row set. We can change the logical plan and we do so, uh, so that every operation in a plan is a method that calculates the size of the row set it produces. So the make the estimate, the algorithm finds a corresponding shard for T1, T2, and T3 rows. Then it gets the shard size and the number of rows in each shard. This operation is very fast and the data is accessible from system shards table in CreateDB. Finally, the estimated row size is calculated by dividing shard, size of the shard with the number of rows. And I would like to mention here that this estimate is pessimistic because the amount of space a shard takes up on a disk is often more than the rows take in memory. However, making this estimate is relatively fast and keeps us on the safe side as the resulting block size will never be larger than the available memory. Up to now, I have presented the idea behind block hash join algorithm that runs on single node. The next step is to make it run in distributed settings. So, idea is to distribute blocks across cluster and execute joins in parallel using multiple nodes. Our solution uh, to this problem is inspired by the Grace hash join algorithm that consists of several steps. The first step is to compute hash for every row in each shard for both tables in a way that matching rows have the same hash. Then we distribute the rows across the cluster by assigning row to a node using the module operator as presented in the slide. After we distribute the rows across nodes, we apply block hash join algorithm on each node. Merge results are sent back to the client. By using module operator for assigning rows to the node, we make sure that rows with matching hashes are very likely located on the same node. Now, let's consider this relatively simple example to illustrate the idea behind distributed block hash join algorithm. In this query, we have join operator on two tables, T1 and T2 distributed on three nodes. The first step is to calculate the hash for each side of the equality operator. Specifically for rows in T1, we calculate the hash using, using the value of A, column A, and for rows in T2, we calculate the hash using the sum of columns A and B. Then the algorithm assigns rows to a node using the module operator. After rows have been distributed, each node combines local rows and the received rows. Then we run block hash join algorithm on each node, we merge results and send results back to the client. Yes, this looks relatively simple and fast. But during the implementation of the distributed block hash join algorithm, 
we identified one potential limitation that I will try to illustrate on this slide. So in case with, when uh, we try to join subset that has a limit or offset clause, as illustrated by the query, single node block has joint performs much better than distributed version. To implement this case, a uh, distributed algorithm must first fetch 100 rows from T1 before distributing um, the rows to other nodes. This is not so easy because each node is processing only a subset of data. And as a result, um, we decided for now that this case is out of scope. And in this situation, CreateDB uses a single node version of the black hash join algorithm that has better performance for this use case than its distributed version. Finally, we completed the implementation of the distributed block hash join algorithm. So to assess its performance, we did a final set of benchmarks. We use the same setup as in the previous benchmark. We consider two tables, T1 and T2, with five shards, one query that joins all rows from both tables, and one query that joins one-fifth of rows. We compare the performance of three algorithms, original nested loop algorithm, single node block hash join algorithm, and distributed block hash join algorithm. And as we can see in the table, all case, in all cases, the distributed block hash join outperforms significantly the other algorithms. So when considering a query that matches all of half million rows, performance improvement of distributed block hash join is more than 23,000 faster than the original nested loop implementation, as we advertise in our title. For half million rows, and query that matches one fifth of all the rows, nested loop doesn't even finish within the given time limit. And to remind you, the time limit for all our benchmarks was two hours per query. Now, when we saw the benchmarking results, um, and when we saw how awesome uh, the distributed blockage join algorithm is, so let's conclude this talk. So the goal of this talk was to present the implementation of the distributed blockage join algorithm for every joins that run in parallel multiple nodes. Even though nested loop has worse performance, we can still consider that it performs reasonably okay for tables with up to, up to half a million rows. For tables with more than 50,000 rows, distributed blockage join algorithm becomes significantly faster than the single node version. Finally, compared to the original implementation with nested loop, we achieved 23,000 times performance improvement with our solution. Now, that was all from me. Uh, if you want to find more about our implementation and CreateDB in general, please take a look into our GitHub repository. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions. Right. Okay. Are we live? Yeah. Yes. We are. So there wasn't there was no countdown. There was only a five minute mark. So thank you, Maria, <laughs> for being here. The Q and A is starting now. All right. There's Thanks the countdown. for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Nice uh, to be to here have today. You. Um. So we have a question from the chat. Uh, if you have more questions, please put them into the chat and don't forget to give them the thumbs up so that they show up here. So Daniel Mora has the question: Do you need to pre-sort the table being divided into blocks? Um, no, actually, that's not the case. And uh, pre-sorting is quite expensive operation. We were considering it uh, when also thinking about uh, what other algorithms we can use to optimize joins. And one of the algorithms we actually took into account was um, 
uh, merge sort, but uh, that one required that columns are kind of pre-sorted. Uh, actually, columns that, that are involved in join. And as we noticed, it could be quite expensive operation for very large tables. We just we just gave up and, and gave a shot to the hash join, which was uh, which was much more performant. Okay, thank you for that answer. If there's more questions, please put them into the chat and give them the thumbs up so that we see them. Um, one of the uh, one of the, uh, the the questions that came up in our discussion is um, whether the the, the presented uh, implementation the, of the algorithm is actually already released, and how do you uh, optimize the performance of other join operations? Yes, uh, so the, the algorithms I, I present in the talk, yeah, it's released and it's uh, it's it's the it's the part of the uh, newest crate uh, DB version. Um, however, for other joins, we we use nested loop algorithm, even though you know like performance is always moving target, and and we are doing uh, we are considering how to to further improve it. Uh, so far, we we use some uh, optimizations for uh, improving nested uh, loop algorithm. One of these optimizations, for example, push down, uh, which maybe some of the some of the people in the audience is already familiar with this. And, and the main idea behind this optimization is actually that you um, do the filtering and uh, ordering of the of the columns that are involved uh, in joins is closer as to the location of the table. So in our case, we actually apply this optimization on tables that on their physical shards. And then after filtering and ordering is, is actually done, we uh, broadcast the result to the nodes that actually run in the join. This not this not only you know like reduces the number of rows it actually uh, CreateDB needs to work with, but also distribute, distributes the workload uh, among the nodes that actually are involved in, in join operation. Okay. Then one of the, uh, one of the, the, the questions that I had, um, so in your, in your benchmarks, you listed, uh, you have four nodes running the experiments. What, what are these like physical, nodes that are then connected via network and yes. um, how does the network impact the performance do you have any idea on that or numbers on that mm, I, I don't have currently any numbers but yes the network can definitely influence influence the performance yeah. um because you you need to send the data between nodes and to distribute them so essentially you know like we we can assume that um easily assume that the network actually affects the, the yeah. performance yeah okay then Okay, there's no other questions from the chat. So one more from 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 myself, then maybe. Um, so the, the 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 benchmarks you presented, you had yeah. you scaled that up to I think half a million uh, rows was or yes. was was the the maximum. How does that um, work with even larger tables? So if you think about like terabytes of of data. Yeah, actually, uh, the joins can be executed on very large tables, and here we can we can talk about uh, tens of terabytes, you know, um, in each table. Uh, what is important is, you know, like to consider is that when joining such a large tables, the left and right side of the join should be of reasonable size. So that means that. Uh, for joining such large tables, it would be you know good practice um, to apply some filter that would actually reduce the number of, of, of rows that, that would be eventually joined. Uh, but essentially, yes, it, it 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 works quite well, and um, um, and and CreateDB is actually quite quite known for having high performance joins. Okay. Um, maybe along those lines, um, so in our HPC center, we have cluster nodes that will have a terabyte of main memory. Um, mm -hmm. Is is with, uh, maybe you have numbers on that or maybe just a, a feeling about that or um, I don't know. The would, would, Is it easier to have uh, like lesser beefy nodes or more smaller nodes in order to have um, acceleration in these parts? So basically have parallelism over like with smaller main memory, for example, or uh, like 
two terabyte nodes that actually you know like have have a good amount of memory that can run these queries i i think especially when it comes to joins you know a large part of the of the of the table needs to be capped into memory so like memory is important having more nodes is important it's really hard at this point to say which one is more important probably depends on your specific use case okay so there is a question from kenneth uh, how close are we to minority report style policing since predictive policing is that actually from your talk or is it, <laughs> no uh, i don't potentially think so to, to one or the other i think this so this reminds me of a question for uh for the for the previous one i think or the one before that yeah probably that that was quite a good talk so maybe uh people interested in asking this should go to the to the to the room for this talk and, and ask again <laughs> let's see um there's a but one more question here uh, have you compared performance against uh, postgres or other relational databases I'm asking because it seems the largest table is in the tens of thousands of records. Yeah, for, for the purpose of these benchmarks, yes. But um, the joins were quite well on, on even larger tables. I mean, of course, we always compare uh, performance of especially other distributed databases against CreditDBs. So this is um, this is kind of part of our day-to-day our -day job, you know, like to consider what are, what are the good uh, the good sides the, the the bad sides but i i would rather stick you know like to distributed databases not necessarily relational databases because um they have a quite different uh, architecture okay at, at this point you know like i don't have some concrete numbers but of course there are use cases where i don't know kdb uh, performs much better and there are use cases uh where maybe other databases perform better so uh, essentially it all depends on the on, on the data yeah i mean it's the the, the typical computer science answer right yes it depends <laughs> it, depends. it <laughs> depends right uh, i mean it's it's very hard to generalize you know like and it's very hard to do a good quality benchmarks that would you know like can provide you some generic answers or, or tell you for this use case you know CreateDB performs the best for another use case, you know, like uh, some other database performs the best. I think it's it's always, and these databases are changing all the time, you know, we are always adding some sort of improvements. Other databases are also changing the architecture, implementing some optimizations. This is, this is never, you know, like, um, uh, it's hard to provide answer that is set in stone and, and uh, you know, like it holds forever. Yeah. All right. So uh, I just got the message that we are done in about a minute. Yes. So uh, I would like to to thank Maria again for for being here, for answering the questions and the chat for for asking uh, very relevant and, and uh, cool, cool stuff. If you want to chat a little more here and talk, learn about CreateDB, you can join the uh, specific room, as always, with the yes. Fosdem system. So we'll stick around for a couple of more minutes and wait if people uh, join here. And with that, thank you again. And uh, enjoy the rest of Fosdem. Thank you, Jan, for having me. It was a great experience.